felicitarlo por esta brillante exposición que nos enorgullece a todos, ahora sí como judíos, conocer de más, más de cerca la historia de un, de un genio que dio una imagen tan, tan positiva de, del judaísmo. Eh, quiero hacer dos o tres preguntas. La primera es algo de que, bueno, lo llegué a leer, que es, quisiera que usted que tiene un conocimiento más cercano de la historia de Albert Einstein, si lo puede corroborar. Tengo entendido de que Albert Einstein era creyente en Dios, en el aspecto, no tal vez en el aspecto religioso, pero que, que sí existe un creador que dice que no aceptaba el concepto de que las cosas se, se hicieran por sí solas, sino que hay un ser supremo que programó todo eso. Así lo leí y quisiera que, en primer lugar, si me lo puede corroborar si, si es cierto. He eh, developed his own concept of God and of religion. Like everything else, he was very unique, original in, in that. He used the concept of God in many, many occasions. I would like to know what God thought when he created the universe. The rest I will find out myself. He said God does not play dice when he had this big debate with Niels Bohr uh, on the meaning of quantum mechanics which gives up determinism that, that things uh, are probabilistic, he couldn't accept that, he believed. So he said God doesn't play dice. Niels Bohr angrily responded, don't tell God what to do. So God is in the discussion. And in his uh, uh, the volume where he describes his worldview, there are four articles, four essays on the concept of God and religion. Now, when he came to the United States, a bishop warned his parishioners not to read the theory of relativity because it's heretic doesn't believe in God. Rabbi Goldstein from New York sent a telegram to Einstein, do you believe in God? 50 words prepaid answer. Einstein said, I do not need 50 words. And he said, I do not believe in a God who cares about what his creatures are doing. Punished them Rewards. I believe in the God of Spinoza. Einstein thought that Spinoza was the greatest Jew before. And Spinoza's God was nature. Spinoza's God, so Einstein revered the harmony of nature, the laws of nature. That was for him. The rabbi was very happy with that answer because that rabbi interpreted it as at least a belief in one God. Not many. There is one such power. Whether you worship him or not worship him, and how you worship him, that's a different story. So this is his concept of God. His concept of the religion, he developed, he believed that in the history of mankind, Religion goes through three stages. In early history, prehistory, religion, I mean the, the God, the worshipping of gods, paganism, all that, is based on fear. Man is threatened all the time, so he appeals, he prays for help. Then comes the next evolution which he identifies in Judaism and Christianity. And this is for him a great step forward because now the belief in God is based on morality. There are moral commands. But still, the God, I mean, traditional Judaism, is an anthropomorphic God. In that sense, he identified with Spinoza. He would have identified with Maimonides if he read 
Ja? The, uh, the guide of the perplexed, more Nebuchim, not the other things. Because there, Maimonides, actually, with his student, discusses exactly the same concept of God. That's what I can tell you. Muy interesante. Eh, yo quiero comentar eh, mi apreciación y sentimiento acerca de la imagen que me da mi hijo. Decía que quiero comentar mis, mi apreciación y sentimiento de la imagen que me da mi eh, Albert, Albert Einstein y quiero oír su opinión si la comparte conmigo. Yo creo que, a mi modo de ver, Albert Einstein fue tal vez un prototipo de mensaje de un judaísmo también, eh, tal vez muy auténtico y profundo, porque en primer lugar, él defendió siempre los valores humanos, como se, se, se mostró aquí, la paz, cómo la promovía y cómo era militante de la paz. Y por otra parte, defendió toda su vida también el humanismo, y rechazaba de forma absoluta cualquier tipo de discriminación, cualquier tipo de injusticia, con toda su inteligencia y lo genio que fue, yo creo que aquí hay una combinación. Por una parte, que esos son los valores más importantes del, del judaísmo, lo que él promovió y defendió. Por otra parte, también los valores del judaísmo es que predomine ahora sí, el espíritu al, al cuerpo. Y sería el desarrollo, y ahora sí, llevó al gimnasio, hizo ejercicio de su, de su intelecto. Nosotros a veces es más común que desarrollemos, principalmente dediquemos a nuestro físico la mayoría del tiempo. Comemos, bebemos, distraernos, ejercicio, eh, eh, trabajar, etc., y él tal vez le dio la importancia a la esencia del ser humano, que es la parte, el intelecto, o llamándolo en términos religiosos, el, el, el alma. Entonces, tal vez el mensaje importante del judaísmo es, es ese justamente, desarrollar el intelecto, y por otra parte, defender los valores humanos, que esa es la base y la esencia del judaísmo. En ese aspecto, yo creo que fue un promotor muy importante del judaísmo al mundo. Es mi, mi eh, impresión y quiero compartirla y oír su, su impresión. Su Not only do I share this impression, but if Einstein were here, he would completely agree with you. Now Einstein, for, this is how Einstein perceived Judaism. For him, the essence of Judaism was the prophecies of our prophets. This was the basis of human morality. This is why he joined the Zionist movement and he supported the Hebrew University. Initially, for him, the goal of Zionism was not to establish a state. A state with an army and borders would be contrary to what he believed Judaism represented. For him, it was always a home where, a cultural home where Jews could revive the essence of Judaism, the arena on which the values of Judaism would come into the prominent existence in modern time. And that is how he perceived the Hebrew University as the place where all that would happen. But coming back to his concept of religion, so, the, so in that sense, it's exactly, Rabbi, what you summarized. Uh, you can give next Shabbat a sermon in your congregation, <laughs> explaining that to your community. Now, uh, he understands that historically Judaism is the Judaism, that's how it survived, is this religion and the religious institution. But he thinks that the next stage development will be where he already is. He called it cosmic religion, the harmony in nature. 
but he never tried to criticize and uh, to talk people out of their practice of religious worshiping God, of the Pulhan of the worship. Because he believed that human life without any transcendental element is not worth living. So even if most people are still not there, and they prefer to express this transcendental element in their life by going to synagogue, by practicing and by observing the laws, it's better that than nihilism, than nothing.